Okay, my outstanding friends, as promised, all about skin. Well, skin is more than just skin. We're going to go from the skin, outer layer, down to basically the basement layer, the subcutaneous layer. All right, and in between, there's a whole bunch of stuff, including hair and hair follicles and um, the sweat glands and you know all blood vessels and all. The, there's a ton of stuff in between here. Now, I have shown all this stuff. However, what I want to show you today is this right here, which is one of the hair follicles all right the hair root which is the follicle and then of course it's fed by a blood supply and you see this here erector pill muscle you see that little muscle it's attached to the hair root you ever hear somebody say well, my hair stood up on end <laughs> that's what happens it pulls it up and it ding, ding. that's what that's what that that's what it does then you see the subcutaneous oil glands. You see the structure of them, They're like a clover leaf. And then, of course, the hair comes up through a very dense layer of cl literally clay. This is clay. It turns into kaolin clay, kaolin clay, K A O L I N clay. Now, and this is, it literally, the skin, almost like Velcros, I'm not kidding you, down to where you have your, your actual bloody tissues. This is a protective layer, skin, all right? So, how can I prove that there were giants that had giant hairs? Well, what if I could show you a giant hair follicle all the way up to the to the clay of the skin and it had all of these exact same features however I say that the erector muscle here does not attach there it attaches way up here this is very very low attachment let's see what we got and I think I can prove what I'm saying the attachment is higher up <laughs> I always have something to say to argue about something Okay, this is just the follicle, and this is more representative of truth. This is Lumen, Biology for Majors 2. It's, uh, and it's about the hair, keratinous filament growing out of the epidermis, and they go through all this stuff. But this one here has a correct anchor attachment. You see? See this right there? That's where that thing attaches. All right, this is exactly the same point. You see that? It attaches right to there. Now, this is the hair. The hair starts to grow up here where the blood vessels come in. And it turns into a ball and rolls around and comes up the hair root. Just like this. You see? It? Straight up. Now, have you ever heard of ingrown hair? Well, what happens with the ingrown hair? Well, an ingrown hair doesn't make this curve, and it ingrows down inside, and it turns black and nasty. You pull them out, and they're, you know, they're, and they're, they're infected. Now, this is not really accurate either, because this shows this muscle. You see that? That's the muscle attachment right there. We're going to look at it in a the microscope. They're showing it in about approximately its right place, but then they're showing the seba sebaceous glands way up there. They're not. That's the sebaceous gland right there. You see that? Again, in the microscope, we'll see it very, very clear. It's, it's that right there. That is directly across from the erector muscle. So we need to change the anatomical books. If this is a human hair, I don't know if it is or not. Well, let me put it this way. If it's a giant. No question about that, it's from a giant. I don't care what it was kind of creature, it's from a giant with huge hairs. And we're gonna look at this in the microscope. You can see where it comes out. That's actually clay on the very end, which is the hair, I mean the, um, the skin. And the hair comes up through, that's the hair right there. 
Alright, so sebaceous gland, erector muscle, hair follicle, root, vein, and artery. And we're going to look at this now in the microscope. This is a very good article. It talks about the hair bulb and the matrix and the papilla and the, da -da 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 -da, and the medulla and the cuticle. So, and then, then I haven't watched this yet, but I'm, I'm going to watch it and maybe I'll include it. Who knows? All right, but this, this is what we got. This is it right there. That's exactly what it is. Only the muscle is a little higher up. All right, this is actually very good as far as they understand the biology now. And um, and it comes down to the end here, and it says, uh, do you contribute? Do you have an idea for improving the content? We'd love your input. I'd l I think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to at least show them what I have and see what they say. All right, check that out. There's the hair follicle. That's the, where the hair actually comes out. And you'll be able to see something similar to that if the, the hair was broken right off at the skin line. Now, here it is in a microscope. Hold on, let me come up a little bit with it so it's a little easier to see. Okay, now, that is where the hair comes out of that ball. Now, we'll come down and look at it a little closer. Alright, this is, we're right down on the hair basically, and it's the hair itself. And of course, the surrounding, and this is the other tissue. Now, let me come up to see if you can see. See, that's really the skin that surrounds it. You know, there's some blood. Everything needs to be serviced with blood. So you're going to see the black and a little bit of red here and there. But all of that is skin. And of course, it's, this is a road. This thing's, I don't know, at least, I would say this is at least 3,500 years old. And at that point, it could have very well have been in the blood with all the rest of the things I've been claiming. But I'm going to tell you right now, it's a hair follicle. All right, that's the orientation of the follicle. And that is the um, muscle. And that is the actual hair coming out. So now we're going to look at this up in the microscope. All right, you see the orientation. There it is right there. Oops, let me turn this on. Now, let me turn this up. That's where the muscle attaches, and that's where the root, I mean, where the, the uh, hair issues out. Now, let's just turn it over, because the exact other side is where the sebaceous gland is. So all I'm doing is rotating it. You see it? I'm rotating, 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 rotating. Boom, there's the sebaceous gland. You see, it looks just exactly like they show it. You see, like a, like a clover looking thing. And it, it looks like, hold on, let me just get this. Alright, that's the sebaceous gland right there. And there's the tip of the hair coming out. And it's exactly on the other side of the erector muscle. So, I say that is anatomically correct because it's real <laughs> okay I just showed you the hair coming out through the it's literally clay basically it's just it's kale and clay and this and it turns into mud when it, it gets eroded now as I showed you the sebaceous gland is it looks exactly identical to that and but it's not in that position or it is in this position more or less but so is the erector muscle all right, so they sh they they bounce off each other. Actually, the sebaceous gland should be down here because it lays right on the ball. So this is, I believe, correct, and this is not correct. The sebaceous gland. Now, what about this bottom here? The hair papilla. Okay, these this is the red and the blo blue blood. So it's artery and vein it delivers and picks up. And then you have that little white stem coming out. Well, let's see if we can see the little white stem coming out right next to those two little things. And this is right in the, the microscope. And I see a white thing right there. Hold on. Let's uh, turn the lights down and you see it a little even more precise. You see that? That's the white thing that goes right up through the center 
and that's the, the artery and vein at the bottom of the the um, hair follicle. Now, coming out of there is right there. You see that? That's the actual hair. And it grows round in a circle and comes up. If it went straight down into you, that's an ingrown hair. So now it turns around and it comes right up through the body of the follicle and comes all the way up through the top and out. And there's a flat spot. Look. You see that flat spot? <laughs> I don't know what to make about that. Hold on. Like I said, I don't know what to make about that flat spot, but I, it, it, it appears to push the hair up, is all I can determine. And then, of course, we, we remember where the erector muscle was, right there. And on the other side, exactly opposite, is the sebaceous gland right there. All right, you see it? It's exactly, I mean, it, it is exactly what they show. But it's not in the positions that they show it in. They are exactly side to side, see it? One right on that side, one right on that side. And all the rest is exactly what they say. This is exactly how it works. So if somebody wants to say that's not a hair follicle, I'd like to see their reasoning. All right, so I think this deserves to be looked at. I w this, you know, if this is a, a hair follicle, which it is, that's from a very, very, very large actor. My fingers, I, it takes like three fingers to, get a, to cover that thing up. That's a good size hair follicle. See this? There's the hair follicles under my hand. See? There's that side, and there's this side. <laughs> this is a big, big hair follicle. So the size of the creature that had this for a hair follicle would have been very, very, very large. And there's that erector muscle. And once again, our fabulous friend, the sebaceous gland. All right, I love you all. All right, I'm sure you've seen all the other stuff. And these are the sweat glands. And up here at the top, they have the little curly hue. And way down below, they have the source. You see this? This goes back, I don't know how long ago. But he's got a sweat gland there, and he's got the root of a hair. You see this guy? You see him coming up? They called them the devil's corkscrews. They had no idea what they are. They're sweat glands. Now, this, on the other hand, is not human, and I think I do know what this is. It's a red-blooded creature, the black and the red. These are, I, I believe, hair stalks. Yes, I agree. It has all the characteristics, and it is kaolin and clay on the surface. However, I don't think it's a human or a mammal because it doesn't have sweat glands. See? Sweat glands, millions of which produce salty, cooling perspiration, are actually found in all mammals. So those ones I just showed you, those giant white ones, are not from a mammal. Okay, this is Sleeping Giant State Park, and this was this ancient stories of the indigenous people of Connecticut and they claimed that there was a giant and they had to poison him because he actually stamped into the Connecticut River and changed the course of it and look at the size this is his head this is the chest they were mining the basalt out of here and that's what comes after you go down below the ribs and then the ribs are left hanging over here. You see this? These are the ribs. You see them hanging over? Now watch up here. You see here? Here they're still intact pretty much. You see these ribs? I don't know if you can see them or not. Coming down, coming down, coming down. And these all are that's what happened. And then the lung was up under there, turns into basalt. All right, it's just different because it's not bones and it's not, it's from the bloody 
dense basalts, and then they mined it out of here, and then they stopped mining it because the people got upset. But I think I can see actually some blood spots in here that were feeding the ribs. Well, look at that. I mean, that's that's the guy's body. If that doesn't look like a body. I don't know what does. And that's what they said. That's what the ancients said. His name was Hobamuk. He might have his legs curled up there or whatnot. I don't know. It would have to be closely looked at. This could be his feet down here. Again, I don't know. But that's Sleeping Giant.